Now that I've actually gone over the entire car and the engine, I'm going through to... What's that? Oh, lunch is... Why are you standing so far away from me? Come on, man. What we can do now is go through each input and function on the actual ECU map and make sure that we've got a wire set up for everything that we actually need and want in the future. We're going to control the starter motor in this particular application through the ECU. So it's as simple as picking starter motor relay output. We want to make sure that we've got an output which is going to do the job and we're going to pre-assign one of those. You mentioned before we didn't have a stepper motor output so we actually got these stepper motor output wires free to use. So I'm going to pick number three and that's going to go to my new starter motor relay inside the car. I'll also need a starter input that then also tells me when to switch that relay on and that will most likely come from the key in this particular car. Um, I'm going to pick this wire here as I don't have an external map sensor to worry about and I can worry about how this is all going to work and function later on. Once we've got this IO report set out in such a way that we can go through each wire, it will make it really, really easy to make this wiring on the bench and then figure it out from there. So I've gone through, finished my nachos, delicious. Uh, we've made a wiring schematic of where we actually need to put each wire in this car now. Um, so for instance, we've got the fuel pressure, factory oil pressure, all the coils and injectors, they're all pre-assigned now within the loom. Um, we've got the drive-by wire sorted out. There's a pedal somewhere in this car. I think it's maybe over there, I'm not really sure. Um, there's a gearbox temperature sensor, and that's gonna trigger the trans fan, which is actually at the back underneath the car. Um, we can actually map the fan to turn on against the actual transmission temperature, uh, which is pretty cool. So we're actually going to run three thermo fans in this car altogether. Um, we've got a GM style power steering. Uh, we're actually going to control that as well through the ECU. Um, not for any particular reason. It can just be done normally through just a switched 12 volt. Um, but we're actually going to map it against the vehicle speed of this car so that we can try and get the feel for the car as nice as possible. Um, sometimes when the steering is too light, when we're going too fast, the car doesn't feel right. But if we can turn that off when it gets to a certain speed, maybe the car will feel a bit nicer and handle a little bit nicer. So we can muck around with that and see how we go. Um, like I mentioned really quickly before, we've got the trans brake and creep buttons. Um, that is something that the owner wants to use for fun because he does want to drag race this thing on a Wednesday night out at Eastern Creek in Sydney. Um, people often have a great time out there, so we've got to wire those parts in as well. Um, we've pretty much used every single wire in our Elite 2500 install. So what I'm going to do is just quickly show you how to go to the View I.O. report so now that we've got all of our wires set out in our uh, ECU map, we're gonna go view IO report. Basically, once we've got this IO report set out in such a way that we can go through each wire, it will make it really, really easy to make this wiring on the bench and then figure it out from there. So you can see that we've used every single wire except for the crank and cam Reluctor sensors. The reluctor sensors we're not actually going to use in this particular uh, cam and crank sensor because they don't have them. It's a Hall effect sensor, so we're going to use positive power and ground to get those sensors to work because they are digital sensors. 
While somebody who is allowed to go and interact with other people is grabbing my forms off the printer, um, I'm just going through and just starting to figure out which wires might need to go. Ah, sweet. Thanks for that. Go and wash your hands. Now that we've got our forms, we're gonna go through and then we're gonna group the wires together in such a way that it actually makes a lot of sense where they're gonna go in this particular car. Um, you won't group them exactly how I'm gonna group them, but it won't be too dissimilar either. I've just gone through and picked out my drive-by wire throttle uh, wires which I pre-selected in my map. So I've got my TPS1, TPS2. Uh, I need a five volt and a ground for this particular throttle sensor. Um, and then I've also grabbed the two drive-by wire positive and negative wires which are pre-assigned in the Haltec mapping for me already. So this bundle is what I've taken and the colors all match up with what I've already pre-selected. So I might just quickly tape these off so I know that these are already done. Now that I've done that, I'll go through sensor by sensor for all the ones that aren't pre-done. So coolant temp already done for me, air temp already done for me. So I'll just go through bit by bit by bit and then we can go through that at the end. So I've separated the bulk of our harness into the different areas of the car that they're actually going to go. So this big bunch here is our main bunch, which is going to go through the firewall grommet uh, once I've done a little bit more work. This will go in and what we're most likely going to do is put it through somewhere near the trans tunnel on this particular car. A very, very common place for the loom to go through is a firewall, either on the left or the right hand side, depending on the orientation of where the driver is or whether it's a race car or a street car. Um, because we've actually got lots of room in this engine bay and it's all been nicely painted at the back, we're going to keep it away from the dump pipe, we're going to keep it away from the driver's feet and his controls, and we're actually going to put it through the trans tunnel. There is just so much room there, we may as well take advantage of it. And it's all out of the way from heat, uh, fuel lines, and just all the other stuff that is involved with running an engine. Next, I've got the fuel pressure and the flex fuel sensor. They're sort of grouped separately and together because in this particular car, the fuel reg and the pressure sensor are right over the other side. And I don't want the dump pipe to be anywhere near my wiring. It just makes it a lot easier to keep it away from the heat and we'll actually route that from the inside through the fender, hopefully through and just make it a little bit more neat. So I'm actually going to do a bit more research about the routing of these particular wires first before I commit to doing anything else with these wires and going ahead and getting it in the car. Next group I've got are going to go across the inside along the inside of the dash and across to the driver's side. So in there, I've actually got a bump button, the creep button or a, um, sorry, the bump and creep button. So we can actually change how we're actually gonna use either of those uh, inputs. The trans brake button, uh, we're gonna do the starter through the actual ECU control as well. So that makes it really, really uh, modern and nice to just maybe have a key just where you tap the key and it cranks by itself. Um, so the ECU has smarts to do that. Um, we're gonna probably put a button in this car. This is the second time I've wired this car now, um, but the first time doing it for EFI. We did have a few problems with the actual ignition key barrel before. So to rule out any problems that we're gonna have anymore, I'm just gonna probably put a start button in it, in and around the center console. So we'll still get the key for security to on, and then we'll press the starter button. So the ECU will do all of that control. So we'll set that up later and we'll show you how to wire that up later. Uh, next, I've got the pedal. 
So this will be the GM pedal that we're going to install on this. I think it's from a VE model, uh, but I'm not exactly sure. There is a few different uh, connectors that I've seen for different models of car. Um, we'll go through that and how to wire that one up. That's going to be a fairly simple process. Four wires that get split into six because we split the five volt up twice and the ground up twice. So we'll do that together later as well. I'm not sure what to do about this next group of wires yet, but again, we'll do some more planning and figure out where they're actually going to go in the car. These are going to run to the rear of the car. Like I said before, we were not going to use the designated fuel pump system inside the loom. Uh, instead, I'm going to use the fuel pump output wire for the starter motor instead. Um, that wiring's already been done for me within the actual fuse box. So I'm actually going to run a fuel pump output to the rear of the car and set up a new fuse box in the back of the car. The fan that is going to run on the transmission cooler, I'm actually going to run that to the rear of the car as well and control a relay back there as well. Uh, and another relay I'm going to set up for the power steering. Uh, this has got electronic uh, power steering installed in it. None of the lines are run yet, but it's in its rough position where it's actually going to go. We're going to control the power steering in this um, so we can map it against an input or an output or the speed in the car. Uh, next I've got two thermofan outputs as well. Um, don't know where these relays are going to go yet, but again, we'll do some more research before we figure out where we're going to route these. Uh, but these will be very, very essential um, because of the giant fans that this car has on it. Uh, these are from a late model uh, Ford and they do use a bit of power. So we've got to strategically figure out where we're going to run them and how we're going to run them. And then we'll go from there. So in the car, like we were just talking about, I'm going to try and route the boost control solenoid through the fender here, um, just to try and keep it away from all the heat of this dump, uh, dump pipe that I was talking about before. So we've got to protect the wiring. So we're going to try and run it maybe underneath here. Um, and there may be some other body wiring that may need to come through here at some point in time, because the owner has requested that we take all of the wiring that used to come sort of in and through here and through here and all that sort of space we want to try and keep it nice and clean and neat now um, fuel pressure and the flex fuel sensor might try and figure out a sneaky way of running it through there or maybe through this part of the, uh, the inner guard just to try and make it nice and neat there are nice grommet solutions which we might be able to use which are nice and neat and again just heat we're trying to keep everything away from the heat there are different ways that we can protect the wires from the heat um, but we can definitely try and figure out the best solution for this type of installation. Um, that's about it for today. I've got a bit more planning on the bench to get done. Um, definitely more planning, because the more planning, the neater the job in the end. Um, if you find yourself getting a little bit tired, if you find yourself getting frustrated at what you're doing, it's always a good idea to just stop. Wiring is not something good to do when you're, uh, when you're tired and making mistakes is not good because finding them later is very, very difficult. So I'm gonna call it for today um, and I'll get back onto this tomorrow. Have a good night, everyone. See you for another day of isolation tomorrow.